Well, welcome everyone um, to Roof Lock Speaks. And today my guest is Nicole Harris. You met her before. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. You know, I consider you to be my family and you know we only have one family. Just like we only have one mother and one father. We only have one family. So I want to welcome you. And I want to give praises and honor to God who is ahead of my life, who has saved me. And I truly mean um, life-altering changes have occurred in which he saved me from those things. So I want to um, talk to you today about strokes because that is what he saved me from. On September the 27th, I was out. As a matter of fact, it was a, just a regular day. I was out seeing patients and had been to a meeting that morning on my route and I got to the first patient's house and I started drooling. And I couldn't for the life of me figure out why am I drooling? What, what's going on? You know, all of a sudden I'm drooling on myself. So, but that didn't stop me because I never once did it enter my mind that I could be having a stroke. I went to the next patient and by the time I got to the last patient's home, I had felt so heavy and so tired. The, but the thing was, was that like two to three weeks earlier, I had been having these uh, periods of fatigue anyway. So I felt that it might be a result of a vitamin deficiency. So I began to take vitamins again. Okay, and we know that they have the things that, that we actually need to strengthen us. Isn't that right, Nicole? Okay, so I started taking those and trying to get enough sleep, which wasn't easy. And I got to the last patient's house and I told him I had to sit down, you know, because I was just really, really tired. So I sat down and I began, he asked me a question and I tried to talk to him. And I asked him, well, how do I sound? Because I had to really, uh, think about how to formulate the word, concentrate on what it is that I had to say and how loud it was that I had to say it. And so I asked the patient, how do I sound to you? He said, you know how you sound. <laughs> so I thought, I mean, I'm still thinking that um, this could not be a stroke. I even went and looked in the patient's mirror to see if it was any kind of facial distortion or changes or drooling or dripping you know, facial drooping or anything of that nature, and there was none. Mm -hmm. So I decided I would drive home. So as I was driving home, I did notice that when I would come to a stoplight, that I had a problem measuring the space. I had a spatial discrepancy. So I would stop like two, three cars behind the car, mm. so far away that two, three cars could fit in between the first car and my car but I did make it home. Even on the expressway, I could not stay in my lane, but the Lord blessed me that trucks, and I looked in the rear view mirror to see, uh, trucks and the other cars, they stayed so far away from me that I was able to make it home. I did have a problem parking in the, in the garage. Okay, I had to do it like two or three times, but I felt that I, because of the tiredness, that all I had to do was go home Get in a bed. Mm -hmm. We always think about going to bed. We That's sleep right. the problem away. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I thought about going home, go to bed, rest, drink some water, and then eat something because I hadn't eaten and I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I did. My daughter happened to call me and said, I sound funny. And I said, um, I'm just waking up. So that's all it is. Then my husband called to say that I sound funny also. And I got up again and looked in the mirror to see if there was any kind of changes because I was like, oh God, I know that I cannot be having this stroke. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not having a stroke. You would not let this happen to me. Lord, please, please, please don't let me have a stroke. Don't let me have a stroke or don't let me be having one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am a person that kind of I take my blood pressure once a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though that's not enough, you should be taking it every day, especially if you have a risk of high blood pressure in your family. Okay. That is something you need to do every day. Okay, watch your diet. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. So I'm staring in the mirror, nothing's changed. 
But by the time my husband got home, he stood in the doorway of our bedroom and he said, Ruth, you've had a stroke. And I could not believe it. I got up and I looked and sure enough, I had the facial droop drooping. I already had the drooling, so we knew that started that morning. Mm -hmm. He said, we're going to the emergency room. So what, you know, I just, I just could not believe that I could have a stroke. I mean, I think that I kind of take good care of myself, mm -hmm. but the stroke thing was something new to me. So I got there and my blood pressure was 215 over, no, it was 242 over 115. So they said they could not bring down my blood pressure quickly. I had, had been having hypertension, but I said, well, I've been taking my blood pressure. You know, generally it's 124. If I'm having a, a rush day, I may get up mm -hmm. to 140, 150. But if I'm having a really stressful day, it may go up to 160, 170, but it always comes back down. Okay, not that I retake it to see if it goes back down, mm -hmm. but I believe that it would go back down. And since I had changed my diet all around and began to lose weight, mm -hmm. I felt that I was doing the right thing. Well, mm -mm. so while I'm in there, I had to, um, you know, do all the things that they do to diagnose you with um, stroke. So I had to have the CT scan, okay, um, of my brain to see if there was any kind of bleeding going on. What the Lord blessed, there was no bleeding. Then they didn't want to bring the blood pressure down quickly, so they wouldn't give me a medicine to bring it down. They would allow it to go down on its own. So they gave me a little fluid, but they had to stop that because I was having a reaction to the fluid. So they eventually decided they were gonna give me some Labretta log and um, Labretta log. They gave me that and immediately my nose started bleeding and my ass started burning. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody got scared, so that was not a good idea. Right. Okay, so they decided they were gonna keep me. Mm -hmm. All right, I really didn't want to stay in the hospital. And, uh, but I did that night. I went to sleep and I just wanna um, tell you how the Lord just blessed. An angel came and sat on the side of the bed and held my hand. And I asked, I said, well, you know, the Lord told me before that I had a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. So if I've got a lot of work to do, why am I having this stroke or why did I have this stroke? And um, if he doesn't fix me, I mean, who's going to listen to me if I'm all mangled up or beat up? I mean, who's going to listen to me? Who can I help? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to look at me and say, well... If he didn't fix you, what makes you think he could fix me? Hmm. Well, that morning, most of the facial drooping had left me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the blood pressure was slowly coming down, continued to slowly come down. So by the time I was discharged, you know, they wanted me to do a rehab, but the Lord blessed me with a family that is um, marvelous. I mean, simply marvelous. I mean, they were there every day to exercise with me, to walk with me, mm -hmm. and we began the juicing process okay. in order to change. Now, for those that don't know what a stroke is, a stroke is when uh, area brain, when one of the arteries in your brain is occluded. That can be from narrowing, that can be from a clot, mm -hmm. but the point is, is that it's blocked and the area that it's supposed to supply the blood to is no longer getting that. So it's not getting oxygen, it's not getting the blood, it's not even getting nutrient, and nor is it able to clean up any waste products that might be there. So therefore, that area dies, and it does not regenerate. For, so those people that think that it may regenerate, it does not do that. Okay, okay. it's just a, a basically a dead space. But the Lord has blessed us with this miraculous healing power where it, our brain is able to make up new pathways in the brain so that we can do the things that we need to do or regroup or recoup the things that we need to coop. But we have to do an exercise and that's not, that's weight lifting for the brain. I like to say that. Okay. Weight lifting <laughs> for the brain. So that means that okay. I do word puzzles. Mm -hmm. I do um, memory games. Um, okay. Cause you got to exercise the mind. Uh, idle mind, what is it, devil's workshop? 
Okay. Exactly. So therefore, he can tear up the place. Now, I also found out that some of the signs and symptoms, because we went through all of these things, mm -hmm. and um, some of the signs and symptoms of that would be uh, visual changes when you're having these, uh, slurring of speech, mm -hmm. paralysis, weakness, pain, headaches, okay? And I had been, like I said, fatigued for like two weeks, and I didn't know that that was an... an, an it was a uh, symbol or what do you call it? It wasn't a symptom to, to the possibility of having a stroke? Yes, it was a leading. It should have told me then that I needed to go and see or seek help, mm -hmm. all right? See the doctor, okay? You know, we like to think as doctors, we like to think that we heal ourselves so we can take care of ourselves, but that's not true. People who need people are the luckiest people in the world. So therefore, they say, or they have the saying that uh, a, a patient, a doctor that has himself for a patient is a fool. Hmm. That's a pretty good saying. <laughs> that, that is, it makes a lot of sense too. Wow. So therefore you need other people to help you. Exactly. Okay, with these things. You may think you know everything and we do get sick and we do fall down. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but we are able and have people around us that are able to pick us up or help us to lift ourselves back up. So I've had to um, call my confidant, which is Nicole, and ask her some, some things because they put me on a medication, which actually started me itching. Okay. And I needed to know what I could use or do to stop the itching. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and that's when I suggested basil. Mm -hmm. Did you try it? Yes, I did. Did it work? Yes, it did. Yeah, because it I, blocks the antihistamine, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it did. <laughs> okay. So I took it internally okay. and I took it also externally. Right. So yes. I rubbed it mm -hmm. and finally I stopped itching. As a matter of fact, I, I think, didn't I send you pictures I of the wells and the... No, you okay. did. You, said, you did send me pictures of the swelling mm -hmm. in some other area, but did you consider bathing in it? No, because I do more showers. I don't okay. want to get down there and trying to get back up. Well, that mm -hmm. would make sense, yes. Mm -hmm. But it definitely worked, yes? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Yes. So, yes. And, and you also looked up um, some of the things about strokes, because one of the things that in researching, what I found out are that men are more likely to have strokes than female, but females die from strokes more often. Oh, okay. There have been uh, 795,000 strokes in the past year. Oh. 600 of those, 600,000 of those were for the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 185,000 of those were repeated strokes. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, most of them have been a moderate mm -hmm. to severe disabilities. Mm -hmm. We spend $30 billion a year on these things. There's a loss in productivity and medical wow. care. So for stroke patients. And as we were talking, we were talking about lifestyle changes mm -hmm. and being, being the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And so. Yes. Well, and one of, the, one of the things I found as well, and I didn't know that it was that more women died, and, but there were more men that had strokes. Actually, I thought it was the opposite, mm -hmm. that more women had strokes. But here's my question to you. Why, why do we think that more women die from the strokes than the men, if men are having them more than the women? Well, now I, I cannot tell you why, but it does happen. Okay? okay. We have more severity. Is it because we may tend to ignore maybe some of those signs that may be telling us or warning us that we are on the verge of having one or could possibly have one because we're so busy being the mother, the wife, you know, and then whatever else it entails to be a woman. Is it is it because we're just too busy being women? I you know that is a possibility and I think that I don't think it's so much that we we're so busy I think because in my case mm -hmm. it's a more of a fear thing because even when Aldrich was to asking me telling me to go to the we had to go to the emergency mm -hmm. room I was like well I had the stroke what can we do huh. you know <laughs> I'm not gonna take any of those medicines okay so, so I think it's a more of a fear factor not only uh, 
are you going to be disabled or mm -hmm. incapacitated? Mm -hmm. But the fact that you've got to stay. Stay You're going to stay away from your family, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And possibly you may have to go through rehab. That's mm -hmm. even a longer stay. So I, I, I kind of believe it's a more of a fear thing. Okay. So you, you would say it was a fear in what, finding out that you would have? Because I'm thinking. Now, you have to remember, you know, we are women. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And facial drooping. You can't put a shirt over your face. Well, no. Okay. No. So. Yes, but if you've already had the stroke, uh -huh. like you said, and now you need to. To do these other things. Right. Embark on the recovering process. Mm -hmm. If if you don't go and get the assistance needed, then steer fear. Fear is more powerful. Yes, it is. And God didn't give us a spirit of fear, which is something that we have to keep in mind. So that when we do face these type of challenges, that we understand whatever his purpose is, whatever God's will is, is going to be no matter what. And if we can relax and again, kind of take a step back from being the typical women that we are, which is again, we're busy. We're always trying to, you know, we're even busy trying to take care of other people. We'll take better care of other people than we do ourselves. That was one of my problems. I know. <laughs> <laughs> busy being a woman, mm -hmm. the woman that you think that you're Caregiver. supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And filling all those voids in everybody else's lives, then we neglect ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? And I, and I've talked about this earlier with, um, one of my children and I was saying that we don't listen to us as much as we listen to other people well the one thing that I know is we don't listen to our bodies when it, it and that's to exactly us. what I'm talking that about is exactly, exactly it yeah we don't I mean when we got a fever mm -hmm. we know that tells us that something's wrong mm -hmm. when we're not able to sleep that means something's wrong okay. when we're not able to eat that means something's wrong okay or even a change in even your um, whole metabolism, the way you digest and, and put food in or take it out of your system. Mm -hmm. That lets you know something's wrong. Something has changed within you, but we don't listen to ourselves. Now, that may be more related to the day-to-day -day activities of life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I also found on this stroke situation that you, in order for it, once you recognize that you have this, that they only have a three hour window in order to uh, reduce the likelihood or the severity of the stroke. Oh, okay, wow. and they will give you what's called a tissue plasminogen, which helps to um, decrease the effects of stroke. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So you have a three hour window to get there. And um, TIAs, which are many strokes, mm -hmm. which I don't can, and they're short. They have a, a a shorter life cycle. In other words, the disability or dysfunction or the symptoms that may uh, follow that stroke will be the time that you have them would be lessened. Okay? okay. Okay. And however, if you continue to have them, those are a signal that you will have a major stroke. Okay. Okay. So we have to be aware of that. But how are you made aware of it if... TIAs? Yes. If, if, if the symptoms aren't as severe mm -hmm. as a moderate stroke. But how, generally, they still get the facial droop and they still get uh, weakness on one side of the body or paralysis. Okay. Or they become imbalanced and it start tripping or okay. they can't hold things. Mm -hmm. um, because when you have these strokes... All right, what, what generally happens, you got imbalance. Mm -hmm. We have um, decrease or loss in senses. Okay. That's even with um, touching things, hot or cold, mm -hmm. determining whether it's hot or cold, your smell, mm -hmm. your taste, those things change, okay? And what I found out in sensitivity, even your hearing, um, you okay. become more sensitive to your pets. Mm -hmm. So you, you, it's like your body is heightened. Mm -hmm. Your sensitivity is heightened within your body. So I found that to be true. And like I said, visual changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people go blind. Wow. Hearing. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mental change. You become confused. Even with um, being able to hear or discern what's coming in. Okay. Okay. Now, as well as what's going out of you. Those things are symptoms. Those things warrant us that. 
that this is happening. Now, we found out that the highest percentage of people who have strokes that mm -hmm. I was talking about earlier, that, that uh, 785,000 mm -hmm. blacks, Asian, and Hispanics. And it's all related to our lifestyle, our, our diets. Okay. You know, uh, we have a higher rate of hypertension. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. We have a higher rate of obesity. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a higher rate of diabetes. I mean, heart disease. Because yes. they generally follow. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So I, you said there's a three hour window, right? Yes. And I'm mm -hmm. listening to all the different symptoms mm -hmm. that can indicate that you are possibly having a stroke. What is, when do you go to the hospital if, because there are so many different components that mm -hmm. can make up a, a stroke when do you suggest a woman or a man for that matter go to the hospital when they feel like their equilibrium is off a bit or if their their vision changes like I mean because you said with the three-hour window there's an opportunity for them to lessen the effects of the stroke right right you started having that stroke in the morning mm -hmm. by the grace of God how many hours later were you still okay before you actually went to the hospital. Well, I was never okay because by the time I got to the last person, mm -hmm. I was already tired. I was already fatigued. I couldn't even stand. I had to get a chair because my legs were so weak. If I mm -hmm. kept standing, I was going to fall on the floor. Mm -hmm. And the ability to drive home, so I I'd already basically had it. It just hadn't manifested itself in a physical mm -hmm. well I guess it, it did manifest it, itself in a physical form but out wide exactly. outward appearance mm -hmm. it had not manifest itself so therefore um, I say like I was having a three weeks of fatigue well if I had gone then I know that there is nothing that I had done any different I mean I, I was working seven days a week almost mm. every week Wow. Okay. Okay. And you I would stay up to one, mm -hmm. one, two o'clock in the morning. So All then right. there's that exhaustion, mm -hmm. the fatigue. Mm -hmm. But nothing was different from what I had, even though I had been doing that for mm -hmm. so long. I mean, I was able to, to do all the other things that I needed to do. Okay. Okay. I still could teach. I still could think. I still could yes. see. I still could walk. I wasn't tired. I may start out tired in the morning, but by the time you know I got through the day I was running mm -hmm. it's like my adrenaline had kicked in okay so but this day that that was not happening mm -hmm. you know so when we begin to notice that there are changes going on within us and we don't know a cause for the change mm -hmm. or can identify a cause for change it's time for let somebody else look at it okay that's okay. when we need to just begin to um look and see or go to someone and see or have some tests ran to see mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I was blessed in the fact that in all the things that that you know because you know in the hospital you know they draw your blood like yes every time you turn around but all those levels were good you know so I was blessed in that that this is the only thing that was wrong the first thing you want to stick my finger are mm -hmm. you diabetic mm -hmm. Do you know those kinds of things you know, my glucose level was fine, you know, so no, that was not the case. And as I said, um, we had began um, doing lifestyle changes, you know, taking the meat out, okay. you know, mm -hmm. doing meatless days. Mm -hmm. We had taken out a lot of the pasta stuff, taking out the bread stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because those things help to put pounds on you. So we had already began to, to try to alter the lifestyle changes. It comes along slowly, and mm -hmm. and I, I, I mean I, if you can, I would say do it, you know, as quickly as you can. But I'm a person that was just eating one time a day. Okay. I didn't, and and you must remember during that time we had like those eight really hot days. Mm -hmm. So every day mm -hmm. I would get in the car, it would be 103 degrees in that car. But wow. I would not drink one drop of water. Wow. I wasn't eating until. I got home, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, oh, God, you know, I know I need to drink water, but I can't drink water, okay? Mm -hmm. So so do you believe th th those particular things during that week, for instance, where the temperatures were, you know, I think they helped. Contributed to you having I think they helped. Stroke. 
-hmm. So it wasn't an issue of high blood pressure. It wasn't a no, blood clot. No, it was an issue of uh, it was an issue of high blood pressure. So yours was as a result of your blood pressure. Well, when I got there, it was two forty two of one fifteen. Yes, exactly. So okay. it had to be that. Uh -huh. And you didn't have any symptoms prior to. Um, like I didn't have dizziness. Right. Exactly. Headaches. Right. No. None of that. Really. None of that stuff. Mm -mm. Wow. None of that. Okay. Because again, that's what we hear when you look at the list of things to look out for. Mm -hmm. You know, they give you this, not that long, but what we say about but, seven but, or ten things, but right? But then we do remember that things change, right? Because everybody, yes. everybody is yes. not designed the same. Exactly, exactly. Okay? We're, we're not made up the same. So what I may take, may you may respond to it differently. Mm -hmm. Or what I may have, you may respond to it differently. Or the symptoms to a disease may be different. It's not the textbook. Exactly. I All believe right. that. Yes. Even when I was going through um, nursing, mm -hmm. okay, and you expected for to go in the hospital and to find things exactly like it was supposed to, or they wrote it in a textbook. Mm -hmm. You would go in there. None of that was that. It was like a reality shock. Yeah. It was not like that at all. So therefore, our symptoms cannot be like that because we're dealing with real people. Exactly. Okay. So then you would say, to sum it up as it relates to um, being conscious of the fact that you may be having a stroke, is to listen to the things that are not common. Things and also, to know that you're at a greater risk mm -hmm. if you have certain people, I mean, if you have family members that have a hypertensive risk, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. have already had a stroke, to, just to know that you are at risk also for having those things okay. to happen. So we have to keep in mind, now we're getting into what's on the outside of us. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you you got to do an, an assessment. Mm -hmm. So like I said, even while I was in the hospital, I had to do an assessment. What was I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. Or what did I do wrong? Okay. And you know, anytime we have to take a look at ourselves and say that we are partly at fault for, or we are at fault for whatever it is that has gone on with us, it is... Um, bothersome or troublesome mm -hmm. you know it's even troublesome just to let you know that I had a stroke okay um, I, I had talked to God about it so it's even troublesome to know that it's even um, a little painful mm -hmm. so to speak but then it's a blessing that you are able to sit here and share this information because I'm being taught something during this exchange that I wouldn't have ordinarily have known mm -hmm. and again outside of the textbook symptoms mm -hmm. we have to again just pay attention to our bodies we need to pay closer attention and listen to what our bodies are telling us so that we can avoid these type of situations right yes yes and uh -huh. you need other people in your life so yeah. um i my my other fear was allowing them to look at my blood work i mean mm -hmm. It, are they gonna find something more terrible? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know. Yes, I understand. Okay, understand. so I I just want to thank everyone for uh, tuning in with Nicole and myself, and I ask you to come back with us next week and join us. And I hope that what I've shared with you and Nicole has shared with you has been beneficial and helps someone to recognize when it is okay, when it is that we may have a problem. Um, we never know, we never know how the Lord will intervene in our life and how he will save us. Yes. Okay. And I just want to say we become more grateful when things of this nature happen, but it shouldn't take these types of situations in order for us to say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for having mercy on me yes. and showing me the light. Okay, because it is difficult to admit when you make a mistake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, people who need people. Exactly, exactly. So, at this time, I ask you to look at the bottom of your screen, and if you have any questions or you want to contact me for any reason, feel free. Okay, I am available. I thank you for tuning in and ask you to come with us again next week.